When I was originally planning my review of the Shanling AT3 CD transport and the accompanying EH3 DAC and headphone amp, I thought they were going to be two separate reviews. However, as I started using them, what I discovered is there's a lot of redundancy between the two. And so I'm actually going to talk about them in one single video, and you'll see shortly why that is and why I think that they don't necessarily make a huge amount of sense to buy them and place them together, which is a shame because they're clearly designed to go together nicely. Let's start with a quick introduction to both units, and then I'll jump straight into sound quality and come back around for some more in-depth discussion of the issues, the features, the functionality of these in just a moment. But first I want to say a huge thanks to Melbourne Tri-Fi Audio for sending out the ET3 and the EH3. And then to explain what both of these are, what I've got on top here is the ET3, and this is a CD transport, meaning it doesn't have an analog output. It's not a CD player that you can then connect up to an amplifier. It has to go to a DAC. That's what CD transport means. It is technically more than that though, because it's also a digital media player, and I'll explain the ins and outs of that at the other end of this video. The ET3 comes in at $729 US dollars, and for that price, as I've already said, you're getting a CD transport and a media player. It does do gapless playback for those that are interested in that from a CD point of view. When it comes to the gapless playback from a media player point of view, apparently there are a few issues. I'll talk about those at the end. It's got a whole bunch of digital outputs, including I2S, if that's of interest to you. It'll upsample the CD audio to high sample rate PCM and even DSD all the way up to 512. It's got Bluetooth input and will also accept USB input. It's also got USB output. I didn't mention that before. But the key thing with the USB input is you can connect up a thumb drive or even hard drives like a NAS drive and kind of turn this into a streaming hub. It's not exactly a streamer in the kind of typical sense of the word. It's not going to replace something like a DMPA6 or A8 as a standalone streamer or even a WIM for that matter. But it does give you some specific streaming functionality, as I said, being like a media server if you've got USB drives connected, or doing some limited functionality streaming through things like Bubble UPnP and other similar apps. But again, I'll talk about all that at the end. I just want to give you a quick sense of what we're looking at here. So $729 US dollars for a media player and CD transport. If we then look at the EH3 underneath, and the first thing you'll probably notice is just how similar these look in every way, what you've then got is kind of the exact same thing without the CD player. And now instead of the CD player, what we've got or CD transport, what we've got is an internal headphone amp. And so now for 889 US dollars, you're getting a DAC and headphone amp with all the same functionality that I just mentioned from the CD transport. And what I mean by that is it will do the same kind of pseudo streaming stuff. It's got Bluetooth input. It'll do all the upsampling to PCM and DSD. It'll do the USB input for using external USB hard drives. And then the only thing that really separates it is it's got the DAC and the headphone amp built in here, but otherwise these two overlap for about 80% of their features. And that to me is a bit of a shame because if I'm going to go and buy something like the ET3 and I want to pair it up with a comparable nice looking DAC and headphone amp, because remember the ET3 is a transport only, you're really buying a whole lot of the same features, the same functions when you buy the EH3. And so you're spending money on the same things twice. And that doesn't make much sense to me. And so that's why I've lumped them together here, because I'm going to talk about a lot of the same features for both of them all at the same time, because everything's identical. Before we get into the identical stuff though, let me quickly cover off the CD transport quality from the ET3. And so remember that this is a CD transport, meaning that it has to give you a digital signal, it cannot give you an analog signal, and therefore you have to have a downstream digital decoder of some sort, whether it's a standalone DAC, an all-in-one DAC headphone amp, an AV receiver, whatever it might be. When I did my review not that long ago of the SMSL PL200 here, I actually put it up against the ET3 that I had here at the same time, running both as transports only. The PL200 can be just a CD player as well. It's got an internal DAC. I compared the two of these, and here's what I had to say about the performance between the PL200 and the ET3. Comparing the $729 ET3 with the PL200, I was surprised to hear that I was actually preferring the PL200. The ET3 came across a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more resolving, or maybe it's just a bit brighter. It was hard to separate those two. But again, I would also say that the differences were very, very subtle. All I can really say for certain is that as I went back and forth between the two, I consistently enjoyed the PL200 more. And that's often a really good test, I find. 
you may not be able to identify specifically what's changing, specifically what's different. But if you find yourself just enjoying one more, and I don't mean enjoying the interface, that's a different story. I'll talk about that in a second. But if you just find yourself enjoying the music more from one of them on an extended listening session, then that's probably telling you that there's something different between them and you should absolutely go with the one that you enjoy the most. And for me, that was the PL200. As I said, I feel like the ET3 just had a slightly brighter, slightly more kind of brittle sound in the treble. It wasn't bad, but compared to the PL200, the PL200 sounded more natural, more kind of refined and smooth to me. But it was very, very subtle, the differences. So as you can tell from that, I didn't necessarily think the ET3 was worth the extra money over and above the PL200, unless you're going to use its extra features, of which it has many, and we're going to talk about those in just a second. And by that, the key feature in here is the ability to upsample the CD audio to high sample rate PCM and or to DSD. And that's a really key differentiating factor between these two. The PL200 does no fancy upsampling, it just plays back CDs. And so let's talk about that upsampling feature and a few other audio features of the ET3 and indeed the EH3, and then make sense of how all of that fits together when you start thinking about both of these devices and possibly an external transport like the PL200. But before we get there, I do want to mention today's channel sponsor, and that's Aura. Aura combines all of your digital protection services into one single location or one single app. That means you've got your VPN, password manager, spam protection, identity theft insurance, all of those individual features brought together in one single location and therefore at one single price. And so what that means is that Aura can save you money on all those individual services and make things easier by putting them all in one place. And so if you're in the US and you'd like to see how much of your personal information is at risk, is out there circulating around the web... And then on top of that, if you want to start cleaning it up immediately and completely for free, you can take a free two-week trial of Aura by going to aura.com forward slash passion for sound. I'll also put it down in the description so you can just click on the link if you'd like to. And so I want to say a huge thanks again to Aura for sponsoring today's video. And now let's start talking about the upsampling of the ET3. In case you've jumped ahead in this video and missed some of the introduction, both the ET3 CD transport and the EH3 DAC and headphone amp have exactly the same functionality in terms of the upsampling capabilities. And off the bat, I want to say that I really like the upsampling potential and the opportunities that it brings. For those that don't understand how upsampling works, it's not about trying to get more data than what was already there. It's about getting that data a bit more accurate or presenting it in a different format to the DAC chip. In the case of going from, say, a PCM signal, like what you get on a CD, which would be a 44.1 kHz 16-bit file, going from a 44.1 kHz up to a 16 times version of that file at, say, 705.2 kHz, and don't worry about those numbers and what they mean, but just by going to a high level of upsampling, what can happen mathematically as a part of that process is just better alignment of the timing of the samples and therefore the accuracy of the transient timing in the music. Again, if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it too much. The point is that what upsampling can do going from PCM to a higher sample rate PCM is improve some of the qualities of the music that are ease used to better perceive things like timing accuracy, timbral qualities or tonal qualities, and just overall make the music a little bit more natural. That's in theory. We'll talk about in a second whether that actually happens here. The other opportunity that the ET3 and the EH3 give you is to upsample to DSD and that's a complete shift in the way the signal is presented. And in some cases, it can actually improve the sound. It does depend a little bit on the DAC receiving that information, but it can give you some nice improvements. And so in both the ET3 or the EH3, the upsampling does much the same thing. So what I mean here is that if you're running a CD in the ET3 and upsampling it within the ET3, or if you're taking an external transport like, say, the PL200 and feeding a signal into the EH3 and letting the EH3 do the upsampling, what you'll get is two different sorts of sound depending on whether you go PCM upsampling or DSD upsampling. And indeed, with PCM upsampling, the theory that I mentioned before does play out in what you hear. Going from a standard, regular PCM signal, such as 44.1 kHz, to the maximum upsampling rate, what I heard from the EH3 and the ET3 was a slightly better sense of attack, but also cleanliness in the transients. So the leading edges of notes, things like a snare hit, a guitar pluck, 
they were just cleaner, a little bit smoother, not lacking in detail or energy, but smoother in the sense that there was less sense of any harshness in the sound. It also improves the overall sense of space that you can hear in the music. It doesn't produce a massive increase in the overall size of the soundstage, so much as a better ability to pick apart where the different sounds are coming from within that soundstage. On the other hand, going from, say, CD quality audio to DSD, that actually changes the character of the sound. And this is something that DSD tends to do when you do either conversion or if you start with native DSD. Compared to the PCM version or basically what is on a CD, what you'll tend to hear is a smoother sound. It could come across as rolled off depending on how you perceive it and how you want to describe it. And what it also does is produce a greater sense of space and depth in the soundstage. One area that that plays out is it's like the main instruments are a step back, whether it's a vocalist or a solo instrument, it's like it's just a little bit further from the listener. And then on top of that, one thing that DSD does, and I'm still not convinced whether I like this or don't like this, is it tends to make the image of sounds a bit bigger. You could say that it's actually smearing the image a little bit, it's less focused, but you could also say that it's giving it more body and presence within the soundstage. And so as I said, I'm not really convinced whether I like it or don't like it. The point is it's clearly different from the PCM sound. Now there is some technical explanation as to why that occurs, and I'll talk a bit about that probably in the review of the SendGrand DSDAC 1.0 that I've got coming soon. And so on that note, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see that review and any other reviews from me, of course. But I think for me, as I played around between both the PCM upsampling and the DSD upsampling from both of these, and again, I can't stress enough, it's exactly the same performance from both in terms of the upsampling. When I did that, what I found was that I actually liked both for different reasons. I think in both cases, the upsampled is better, in my opinion, than the standard version signal. But it probably comes down to what you're looking for. The DSD is a slightly more relaxed, slightly more kind of easy to listen to sound with, as I said, a bit more space around the music and the instruments, a bit more space between the listener and the instruments. Whereas I think the PCM retains a bit more of the energy of the original sound. And so you can really tailor it to your system, which is kind of cool. If you've got a system that's a bit attacking, you might like the slightly laid back feel of the DSD. If you've got a system, though, that is already quite smooth, then you might want to stick to the PCM upsampling so you don't lose too much energy, particularly from those transients where I'm talking about the energy. And so I think the upsampling feature of these is fantastic. As I said before, my issue is that it's duplicated between the two. And I get why they've done it. There'll be those out there that only want the EH3. And there might be those out there that only want the ET3. So I get why they put it in both. What I'm just not a fan of is that you're kind of paying for the same technology twice if you want a stack like this one. Now, I should add that you wouldn't stack it this way because the CD transport's underneath and you can't get to it. The other reason you wouldn't stack it like this, though, and this is a bit of a side note, we're kind of getting out of sound quality here, but the buttons to control it are on top. As you can see here, we've got buttons along there. And the problem with that is if you stack this as intended, when I say as intended, as it looks like it probably would naturally want to stack. Now, I can't access any of the menu control buttons on the top of the EH3. So I can access the menu through the button here, but I can't access the back button. I can't access the source select button. There's a whole lot of issues with this design if you want to go vertically instead of horizontally as I think they may be intended to be. But if you're anything like me and you're running this on a desktop, you're going to want to go vertical, not horizontal, and that's a bit of a problem with the design. But again, I've gone off track. We'll get to that more at the end. So once I got to this point in using and making some notes on these two components, I started to realize that there wasn't a huge amount to talk about. The ET3 I'd already determined wasn't quite as good of a transport, a CD transport, as I think the PL200 is, and the PL200 costs less. And then once I determined that the upsampling feature here was excellent, but also realizing that it's also on the EH3, it kind of meant that, for me, I think the ET3 is a little bit redundant. I think despite the fact that it's going to create an aesthetically mismatched stack, I would personally choose a different CD transport, such as the PL200, and then just feed it into the EH3. Or if you've already got a nice DAC, I'd take the ET3 and then bypass the EH3 altogether. I can't see any reason beyond the look of them, as long as you're happy to have them side by side, I can't think of any reason that I would buy these altogether. 
And so let's talk a bit now about the performance of the EH3 from a Sonic perspective. So you can decide which way you might go. Would you buy the ET3 to get the benefits of a CD transport and media player with internal upsampling? Or would you prefer to maybe upgrade your current DAC and headphone stack by going from the EH3 and just bypass the CD transport capability? And so to work that out, the easiest way I could think of was actually to put the PL200 up against the EH3. And what I mean by that was running a CD in the PL200 and then listening to the analog output from the PL200 versus the decoding being done by the DAC in the EH3 here. And so how I set this up was I took the analog output from the PL200 and ran it into the Burson Voyager headphone amp. The review for that one's coming really soon. Make sure you subscribe for that one. So I took the analog output from the PL200 into the Voyager and then also a digital output from the PL200 into the EH3 and then from the EH3 back into the Voyager. So in other words, internal DAC here, the DAC here, both fitting into the same headphone amp. And from memory, I was running the Hyferman HE1000SE at the time. What I noticed as I flipped back and forth between these two, and by the way, I actually confused myself on this one. When I first made my notes, I thought what I'm about to tell you was actually talking about the EH3. Initially, I thought the EH3 was the slightly smoother sounding DAC of the two. Then when I made a change somewhere in the system, I suddenly realized that the smoother DAC of the two, the therefore the more enjoyable DAC in my opinion, the one that had the same resolution, the same detail, but a better sense of refinement, that was all coming from the PL200. And so initially, it seemed to me that there was no sonic benefit in buying something like the EH3 if you just wanted an external DAC. However, I then played around with the internal upsampling, and that turned the tables. Once I was able to upsample the sound up to the high sample rate PCM or DSD, and especially DSD in terms of smoothness, suddenly now the EH3 output was the smoother and potentially more enjoyable sound. Again, some of this is going to be preferential, but to me, the EH3 sounded better in upsampling mode. As I played around more and more, I was finding myself consistently enjoying the DSD upsampled version of the EH3 because it did give that slightly smoother, slightly more spacious sound with a slight loss of image focus as the only drawback. And so just to reiterate what happens with the image, the pinpoint of say a vocalist goes from being a pinpoint to being just a little bit wider in the soundstage. And so the soundstage might start to feel a little bit less focused when going from DSD in the EH3 versus say the PL200, but I was enjoying that extra sense of size in the image, in the individual instruments, and I was kind of happy to trade off a little bit of that precision in the image focus. Again, it's very preferential. The cool thing is you've got the choice to go with DSD or high sample rate PCM. And so what this tells us is that as a DAC, I think the DAC in the EH3 is really nice. I don't think it's setting the world on fire. The fact that it's competing with the PL200 tells us that it's operating at around about the kind of 400 US dollar range for a DAC. So that's pretty good when you think about the other features built into the EH3. About half of what you're spending is getting you equivalent performance of the DAC compared to what you could spend on two separate units. And then as we'll talk about in a moment, you're getting a whole lot of other features to go along with it. Whether that makes it worth it, I have to leave up to you, but so far it's kind of punching at its weight. If we then look at the amplifier that's built into the EH3, that also performs nicely. The overall sound quality from the amp is rich and smooth, but not lacking detail. It's got a good sense of resolution, a good sense of detail, but it's delivered, as Shandling tends to do really well, with a nice sense of refinement, a nice sense of control, and it's a very easy amp to enjoy. It's one of those amps where in isolation, you can't really imagine it getting much better. But then when you do compare it to something better, you can hear that there are gains to be had by spending more money. But once again, I'd say it's punching at about the right level. And the reason I say that is that to get better sound than what you get out of the EH3, you're going to be spending at least 500 to 600 US dollars. So in other words, well more than half the price of the EH3. If we were to cut the cost of this right down the middle and say it's 450 odd dollars for the DAC and 450 odd dollars for the amplifier, then it's kind of sitting about right for what you're getting. Specifically, the amps you'd have to go to to get better sound would be something like a Gishelli Labs A3 Pro or going up another step again to something like the Auna or Aeon S17 Pro. There's also the Singer SA1 is another great option. And the commonality of all three of those that I've just mentioned is they're all discrete designs. And that's really what seems to be holding back the EH3. 
As is always the case in every amp that I've tried, amps that use integrated chips, so sort of little tiny chip-based op amps, those designs generally have pretty flat sound stages, and that's true here. It's not a bad sound stage, it's not a complete wall of sound, but it doesn't have the depth and layering of some of those discrete amps that I just mentioned. And so that's the reason why you might spend more, but it also means you're going to end up with more boxes and more cables. So as a standalone, all-in-one, I think the EH3 is hitting all the right marks. It just depends on whether it's what you want. And so at this point, what was becoming clear to me was that I think both of these devices on their own are fantastic. I think together it's way overpriced because you're paying for features that you don't need in both devices. But if you just need a CD transport with fantastic upsampling and media playback, the ET3 is great. I think it sounds good, but not quite as good as the PL200 if you don't want that upsampling and media playback function. And if you want a DAC built in, that's another benefit of the PL200. Or if you don't need a CD transport and you are more drawn to the upsampling and the media capabilities, then the EH3 is more the standout to me. And in fact, that's probably my overall takeaway from what I've said so far, is the EH3 I think is a wonderful device. The ET3 I think is a pretty specific niche type device. I would personally prefer to pair up the EL200 and the EH3, or maybe the EC Mini, and I've got the review of that coming soon, the EC Mini battery powered portable CD transport connected into the EH3. That's probably the direction I would go rather than the ET3 and the EH3, or even the ET3 on its own. But as I said, both work well. The EH3 for me is the more versatile standout unit. And so let's do a couple of device tours now and talk about the key functions that I think make these extra interesting. Because there's so much more than a CD transport and or a DAC and headphone amp. And that's because both of them can do this media playback, this kind of USB streaming and even DLNA or UPnP type streaming. Both of them can do that in a rather unique way. And so the idea is that you can connect up to these using a smartphone or a tablet and control media playback and stream media playback through the smartphone or tablet and then with these devices. However, if you've got a local library of music on a hard drive or a NAS drive, then the ability to plug it into here and access it on the fly, controlling it with your smartphone or with the play and pause and forwards and backwards buttons on these devices, that's where they can be really, really good. Now, if it were me, I would still stick to a proper streaming device like an Eversolo DMP A6 or a Wim Pro, and then I'd just feed the digital output from those into something like the EH3. That's what I would do because I like the versatility of having Cobas or Tidal or Amazon or Apple all on the fly, and having it on a touchscreen might be even better in the case of the Eversolos. So these aren't going to give you quite that level of access to those services, but they do provide an interesting solution. Now, it is interesting to note that some people have had some issues running the ET3 streaming when gapless playback is switched on. It can actually stop streaming playback. So from one track to the next, it wants to pause afterwards. I'm assuming that's all going to get fixed in firmware, but it is a little bit of a finicky system by the sound of it at times. One other little quirk that's worth mentioning is that if you're running the USB output from the ET3, the other digital outputs get disabled. On the other hand, if you're running any of the other digital outputs, they all run at once. So it's only if you plug in the USB output that everything else switches off. If you're running I2S, coaxial, optical, etc., there's no problems at all. And so that's probably a good time to jump into a quick device tour of the ET3 and then the EH3 to wrap everything up. So with the ET3, what we've got here is pretty simple. On the front, we've got a control wheel. That's going to let you access the menu, scroll through the menu, etc. We've also got this little sort of almost round display. It's chopped off at the bottom, which is a bit strange, but an almost round display there. It's an easy and attractive interface. But with all this real estate they could have used here, it might have been nice to see them use a bit more of it. And then from there, we've got the control buttons on top. So we've got a source button, a stop button, play pause, and a back and forwards button as well. We've then got our teapot style lid, so it's a top loading mechanism. Unlike the PL200, which is a two part mechanism, this is a single part. You can hear that little clamping bit rattling around in there. If we then flip it around, on the back of the device, we've got USB input, USB output, we've got an I2S, AES, optical, and coaxial digital. So buckets and buckets of digital outputs. Just to clarify here, the top USB socket is for plugging in an external USB hard drive, NAS drive, etc. And then the USB audio socket is to output USB audio from the CD transport. 
So that does make the ET3 a little bit unique. There's only a couple of CD transports around that will give you a USB output. There's the ET3, the AC Mini, and then also the shit Erd. But then you've also got the regular old optical and coaxial, as well as the slightly potentially higher quality and less common I2S and AES outputs. And for the record, the I2S output is lovely paired up with EH3. We've then got the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. It's probably also worth mentioning here that there's a dedicated Shandling app that will let you control either of these devices very seamlessly, very easily. I have found that app to be a little bit quirky in the past, but generally pretty good. And then finally, we've got a power switch and a mains power socket. If we then put down the ET3 and go to the headphone amp and DAC version, the EH3, what we've got is a very similar front panel. So everything's the same in terms of the display and the control wheel. The difference now being that because we've got a headphone amp, we've got multiple headphone outputs and all options are covered. So we've got 4-pin XLR balanced, 4.4mm balanced, 6.3mm single-ended, and 3.5mm single-ended. So really nice range of outputs there. Any cable you're likely to have for your headphones is going to connect to one of these. On the top, we've got the same buttons, except this time there's no stop button. Instead, you've got a left and right source button, which can make it a bit easy to select your sources compared to something like the AT3. And then flipping around to the back... On the back, we've got lots and lots of ins and outs because this is once again a DAC and headphone amp, which also means we've got preamp capability. So we've got analog input if you want to use this as a headphone amp for some other external source, like say a phono stage. We've then got RCA and XLR outputs that can be line level or variable level if you want to use this as a preamp. We've got coaxial input, optical input, USB-B input, I2S input. And then we've also again got USB for connecting hard drives and USB audio output, which I haven't actually tested on this one, but I'm guessing the idea is if you want to use this as a media playback device and maybe feed it out to some other external DAC for some reason, then you could theoretically do that there. As I said, I haven't tested that one. I don't really see why you'd spend the money on this particular box to then go and feed the DAC signal or the digital signal out to something else. It kind of means you're bypassing a lot of what this is capable of doing for you. And then again, we've got the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi antenna, main socket, and mains power switch. So as you can see, two very, very similar devices. Two devices that look like they go together, but don't stack very well together. And two devices that share almost all the same features and functions, except for the CD transport in one versus the headphone stage in the other. So they're a very unusual kind of pairing. I think the EH3 is a really nice unit. I love its versatility. I love its functionality. I particularly love the upsampling feature. And then on the other hand, if you just need a CD transport and you want brilliant sound out of it, the ability to upsample through the ET3 is fantastic. If that's all you're looking for, if you just want a CD transport, this in either the PCM or the DSD upsampling mode is one of the nicest transports I've heard. And the ability to do media playback through it as well definitely makes it really interesting. I just think you need to consider one or the other, not necessarily both. And so hopefully at this point, I've clarified for you how these do or don't really fit together and how the different features and functions of them operate. And in my opinion, make them both pretty unique. As always, if you found the video useful and informative, then please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, be kind to each other, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.